Now, Wes, you know at these shows, you've been to a lot of them. There's only one thing to remember about these shows. What's that, Herb? Carry one of these everywhere you go. That's a great idea. I agree. been a fan of Luxman. Even just coming in, to be honest, just the name makes puts me in a good mood. I used to build amplifiers and I remember just you know drooling over your stuff in magazines. And we have the 300 B's here and we were just listening to some music. Would you mind telling us what we were actually listening to? Were we listening to the 300 B's? Indeed, that's the amp that we're playing right now. Ah. So Luxman has two, you know, statement amplifiers. One is a solid state it's the uh, M900U, Class AB, um, but they also have this very special amp, um, which is their 300B single-ended triode design, the MQ300. It uses, these are Takatsuki 300B tube amps ah. from Japan, so these are, this is all made in Japan. Um, this is outputting 8 watts per channel. Two rectifiers, it looks like. That's right, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, you know, we were listening, this is the Luxman Ultimate System, basically. Ah. So this is their highest end SACD player. This is the D08U. Um, this is their 900 series preamplifier, the C900U. And then, like I said, they have the two two power amp options. Um, we weren't listening to vinyl right now, but I do have their highest end uh, phono stage, the EQ500, and their turntable, the PD171A. This is all Luxman, uh, with the exception of the, uh, the cartridge. Um, and then and the we're listening to triangle speakers from France. Um, these are in the Magellan series, which is their highest range. Uh, mm. These are the Quatours, 19,000 for the pair, all made in France. Um, wow. You do see, you know, five drivers on the front, but there is also a driver on the rear. It's a rear firing tweeter, ah. really opens up the sound stage. Um, I should mention also the entire system's wired with Nordost cables, tier right. two series, and we're using modulum racks from Canada. Thank so that's you. a complete system. Very cool. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for your time. Thank you guys for your time. You're welcome. Always a pleasure. We just got out of the Luxman room. Actually, that's why I'm leaning on the wall. You know, audio shows are tiring. But I was sitting next to a guy who kept saying that the speakers are out of phase. When I'm listening with the microphones, I didn't really hear that. Maybe you'll hear it better than I did. I was paying attention to keeping my head still, but I thought the tone was really beautiful. I'm kind of a big fan of Luxman. I sort of, uh, it's an aspirational product in Herb's world, and I kind of sit there, you know, maybe I overlook things, but I thought the sound was among the best in the show, the people were among the nicest in the show, and they made a beautiful presentation. I'm 
curious what you think. This is Alan Rhodes from Bright Audio, and I've encouraged him to tell me what he really thinks of this New York show. He's a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker. I love the New York show. That's why I'm here. And the New York show uh, has been kind of looking for a home time-wise, but uh, and it's 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 a uh, it's a struggle to uh, you know get a show together in this environment with a show every weekend. But 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 <laughs> I've been to all three of those. I'm very grateful to have a local <laughs> show because a lot of these rooms are really good sounding rooms uh, under pretty adverse circumstances and acoustically. But but they managed to get some good sound and the halls are crowded and and the, and the equipment is really interesting. So, and everything is good to say. You've heard of Ohm's Law. Have you heard of Ohm? It's in Red Hook, Brooklyn. I used to live in Red Hook, Brooklyn. Let's go see it. Oh my, look. It's Alex Roy. Oh, I'm her. Nice to see you. <laughs> Do you mind if we uh, take a look around? Will you show us what's playing? I don't know. I see, I see the outlaw, and I reviewed the outlaw. I think it's on this month's cover of Stereophile. But maybe you'll tell us. Look, dang now, there look it is, right here. here. Home loudspeakers are in Red Hook, and. I used to live just down the block. I used to walk my dog past her factory all the time. I know that corner really, really well. What is your name? My name's Evan. Evan, how do you do? I'm Herb, good to meet you. Pleasure. Well, you'll explain how these work. Does the lids come off or do they sure, stay Sure, the, the grill comes off. Underneath, there's another grill. Uh -huh. It does not come off. It is permanently fixed onto the speaker. What we have here is a Walsh driver which has a downward firing woofer, to use a conventional term, uh, and you're getting the radiation off of the back of it. It's firing into a tuned, ported enclosure, and there is a super tweeter crossed over at eight kilohertz on top of it, which is aligned in phase and in time to sound and measure like a single source. Is it always like that with the old ones? Since 1982. Okay, all right. The very original ohm speakers I understand. were fully omnidirectional, which meant that the high frequencies were also omnidirectional. If you put it near a wall, it smears the stereo image, so you had to have them far away from a right, wall. I remember. So the minimum room size was a pretty big room. But these are close to the wall. They like to be close to the wall because we control the directionality with the super tweeter, which means that you can put them in a room that isn't huge. A room that has walls, your room probably has walls, might as well take advantage of it. And it'll have a three-dimensional sound stage that stays in place as you move around the room, which fully omnidirectional speakers don't have. And what about the, the outlaw? What about the outlaw? Famous outlaw. The $799 outlaw. outlaw. This outlaw is a fantastic integrated amplifier. We're using the DAC in it, so we're just taking the digital input from, we're basically taking a flash drive into it, um, and it is decoding the information. It does all the way up to 24-bit, uh, 196K, and it has 160 watts, I think, in 4 ohms. These are 6 ohm speakers, so it's somewhat less, but it sounds like a lot more because it's it a very dynamic amplifier. Actually, we're going to plug our own magazine. We're going to refer to, refer the, the listeners to uh, the review itself. And now, with any luck, we're going to listen to attention screen. Uh, let's see what it sounds like.
So what'd you think? I think they're really great. Yeah. I mean, for twenty eight hundred dollars to have like a classic design, like a so that what they cost twenty eight. And it's, and it's, it's and they look it's, fabulous sitting on the floor. A little, a little maybe too little too period correct for me, but the sound. <laughs> too period I mean, but correct. But think about what you get for twenty eight hundred dollars. Powered by the Outlaw for 800 bucks? For 800 So we're yeah. talking three grand total. It's, it's really good. It's really Absolutely. good. Yeah. And what about your scarf? Where does that come from? That's American a beauty. American Apparel. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> Very good. Nice to see you. Thank everybody. you. Ah, it's Real always treat. good to see you. Big fan of yours. Wasn't that great running into Alex from NoHo Sound? Uh, I hadn't seen him in a long time. Man, he looks fabulous. The show's over. It's 30 minutes after the show, but let's sneak in. I think we're gonna be able to find the tall wizard, Michal from my tech. Hopefully, keep our fingers crossed. Uh-oh, I see a tall wizard and, a, and another man. Yeah. Michal, hi. It's the show is over. Everything's shrouded, but we're happy to be here. Siobhan. Good to see you, good to see you. Remember me? Hey. And, uh, we just, oh, we're glad you're still here. We're sorry we kept postponing, but we want to say We're hi. glad, you know, save the best for last, right? And, well, <laughs> no, it's true, it's true. What I need though is I need you to just, you know, I've reviewed this stuff, I've reviewed the, the, the Manhattan, I'm, I live with the Brooklyn. Tell us about the new amp. A headphone amp, that is better than this one. This is, the, this is actually no. the Brooklyn DAC Plus. This is the new revision of the Brooklyn. And so oh. the Brooklyn's about two years old, and so after uh, our success with the Manhattan 2, we wanted to take everything we've learned and distill it down to the new Brooklyn DAC Plus. And across the board, we've made just about everything better. It's a better DAC, more resolving, more powerful, more transient new attack. Hmm. Mm -hmm. More current. And what's the, the chassis under it? The chassis under it is our new Brooklyn amp, and it is a dual mono, 300 watt per side, bridgeable to 600 watts. No and way. It, and in fact, it even has a bi-amp mode. Uh, we're incredibly excited about it. We've had a lot of high praise, and especially some blue chip speaker manufacturers have chosen to showcase their $16,000 speakers with it. Um, How much is it? Uh, it is $2,000. Uh -huh. And a paired with the, with... And it sounds like tubes. Mm -hmm. Now, I always wondered, you know what digital? People say, well, it sounds like analog. And with solid state, they always say, oh, it sounds like two. Mm -hmm. How come analog never says it sounds like digital? <laughs> <laughs> That's not meant to be a joke. That's a serious question. No, I never see anybody say, my, my we, turntable sounds just like a DAC. Um, I guess because we evolved in analog world, if we had evolved in digital world, then we would love digital, but because everything was analog before 20th Everybody's century. Everybody's nostalgic. I think that's the right answer. Uh, nostalgic. Nostalgic. Mostly, yeah, I think yeah. that is the right answer. It's also yeah. a reference point, because I think digital does have this resolution, this quality to it, but nobody knows what that's really supposed to sound like. It's just, digital is such a, a vacuous notion of what is right, but these classic pieces of analog gear that have defined the industry, they're the ones that are the one, when people are talking about tubes, they're talking about the very best tube equipment. No, but that's a they're good, talking about the really best analog. We do the same thing actually. I'm a painter mm -hmm. and oil paint and acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. Almost the same. <laughs> analog and digital. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Okay, oh, thanks thanks for our visit. Show us yes, over. We're all tired. Yeah, we're we're heading out. We're happy. All right. All the thanks best, guys. <laughs> take care. Take care. Look at here. This is what happens. A whole day of reporting whole day of recording and binaural, a whole day of visiting rooms, trying to make it a live experience, and the stereo file, stereo file <laughs> reporter ends dead on the floor. But thank you guys. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the next show.